All right, could the Kansas City Chiefs trade for Traylon Burks? He kind of hasn't worked out in Tennessee through a couple of seasons. Rumors flying around. We're going to dive into that. Coming up here on the Chiefs Report, my name is Harrison Graham. It's a new month. Happy birthday, Mom. July 1st, her birthday. Uh, AFC West July sub battle. We don't have a Chargers channel. They, they're irrelevant. Uh, Broncos breakdown, Raiders report, Chiefs report, all starting from scratch in the month of July. Let's win this battle. If you want free and daily Chiefs videos here on this channel, we are the place for you. So go ahead and subscribe, and let's jump on in. Could Traylon Burks be a Kansas City Chief, and could he be the latest recovery project for Andy Reid? That is going to be the primary topic here of today's show, and we've talked about him before, but it's been a while, and obviously Kansas City, they've got an interesting wide receiver room right now. We've talked about this. The top three is pretty set, right? Rasheed Rice is probably going to get a suspension at some point, but... Barring another legal incident, he's going to be on this team uh, moving forward. Marquise Brown, Xavier Worthy, that's pretty clearly your two and three. But then you just got a bunch of guys, right? Like, what's Sky Moore doing this year? Is Kadarius Toney going to get his head screwed on straight? Justin Watson, is he still a part of this thing? We've talked about Nico Remigio a lot. Like, you've got a bunch of guys competing for wide receivers four, five, six, potentially seven if they want to go heavy at the position. And Look, Traylon Burks is a very talented player. He just has not panned out so far in the NFL. There could be a lot of reasons for that. Um, you know, his rookie year wasn't great, but I thought he finished strong. And then last year, it just did not come together at all. Obviously, they signed DeAndre Hopkins. He became their number one, but he fell down the pecking order to three, four. He just has not been a big part of their offense. They signed Calvin Ridley this offseason, so um, it's kind of unknown where his future goes from here. And I think the question is, from a Chiefs perspective or any team that's potentially looking to take a chance here on Burks, is like, is the jury already out or has he not gotten a fair shake? Because Tennessee has been in kind of in flux the past couple of years. Tannehill got benched. They went to Will Levis. Vrabel gets fired. So, like, things have been weird there. But he hasn't exactly carried his weight either for being a first-round pick. So, uh, I do wonder if he still has a chance to reach that first-round potential or if he kind of just is what he is, and that is simply just a depth backup wide receiver. I want to hear from you guys before we dive into this a little bit more. Would you trade for Traylon Burks? Type Y for yes or type N for no. I'm not against it. I'll have my final answer later on in the show, uh, but just know he has not done much up to this point, so I don't think having high expectations would make a ton of sense. Now, there have been examples of late bloomers in recent years and historically, obviously. You look at a guy like Van Jefferson, year three, uh, has 800 yards, and that's year two, excuse me. Same with James Washington. Uh, a guy like Nelson Aguilar, like he was almost out of the league a couple of times, then he would bounce back with big years. Travis Benjamin almost had a 1,000-yard season. So it's not like guys can't come onto the scene at a high level later into their careers, and he's only two years into this thing. These are like really big examples, right? Steve Smith breaks out in year three with 1,000 yards. Eric Decker, same deal. Brandon Lloyd way later into his career, out of nowhere, almost has 1,500 yards. Am I saying Traylon Burks is going to do that? No, but – to count his career over two years in, I, I think that would be a little uh, ridiculous as well. I liked him a lot coming out of Arkansas. I don't think the Titans have used him properly. To me, he's kind of a poor man's Debo Samuel. It's like just get him the ball in space and let him go. Like if you're expecting him to be a route running technician, like he's not going to win. He's not going to win in man to man situations against good corners in this league. But screen game, jet sweeps, mesh concepts. Play him out of the backfield some. I think he can be an effective bruising runner with the ball in his hands. And it hasn't helped that he's had a lot of injuries as well uh, since being drafted. Uh, he had an asthma conditioning issue uh, his rookie year, which obviously wasn't ideal. That kind of uh, ended up being not a red flag, but just like, okay, it seems like he's not in great shape. That's not ideal. Had a turf toe issue, which someone for his game trying to make people miss, that's obviously a problem. LCL sprain later on, had a patella sprain last year. I mean, he's already had a handful of injuries in two years in the NFL. Um, so a little patience could make sense here. And what's the old cliche? Sometimes a fresh scenery for a player ends up paying off and you see guys uh, play much better. I mean, 
Justin Watson was not even an NFL player, basically, and he comes to the Chiefs and ends up being a nice role player. I, obviously, Traylon Burks is a lot more talented, and you would hope he would be better than a Justin Watson, but it happens. And obviously, the Chiefs are a very offensive-friendly team that uh, can get the most out of guys, no doubt about it. There's also been some chatter that Traylon Burks could just flat out get cut. He could end up being on the roster bubble. Bleacher Report uh, went as far as listing him as a cut candidate. So maybe you wouldn't even have to trade for him. Maybe you could just snatch him uh, during training camp if he does get cut. Here's Gary Davenport of Bleacher Report saying more here. He says, where that Burks role is going to come from is the problem after they added veterans Calvin Ridley and Tyler Boyd to a wide receiver room that already included DeAndre Hopkins. That drops Burks to the number four option at best. If he isn't passed by the likes of Nick Westbrook Akinney, who had better numbers than the 24-year-old did last year. And yeah, it's a very valid point. Like, look, I doubt he would get cut, but I do think if you're Tennessee, it's like, you signed Boyd for a reason. You had already added Calvin Ridley. Like, if you felt like Traylon Burks could be a solid number three, why are you signing Tyler Boyd, a 30-year-old receiver, when um, you're a young team with a young quarterback? Like, why are you doing that? Well, it's because you probably don't believe in Traylon Burks. I, I mean, that is really the reason uh, at the end of the day. And so, look, I don't know where this goes from here. I don't know if Tennessee decides to – float him out on the trade market. I don't know what they think they would get in return. I don't think it would be much. Um, a trade idea I had thrown out there uh, a while back, and I'll mention it again here, kind of the classic late-round pick swap. You get Traylon Burks in a sixth for a fifth. I, I mean, I, I'm not breaking the bank for Traylon Burks. Like, I, I just don't think Tennessee has any leverage here. They showed their hand when they signed two veteran receivers in addition to Hopkins this offseason. Like, Tyler Boyd, again, like, all the chatter is low. He's going to go with the win-now veteran team. No, he signed with the Titans, who's not expected to compete this year. Uh, that tells you that they're not high on Traylon Burks. And to Davenport's point, Westbrook Kenny was better last year. So, like, he might be wide receiver five there. And the reason I'm not giving up a lot here either, which, by the way, I don't think this trade would happen, is, okay, he's what, wide receiver four or five in Tennessee? That's the best-case scenario in Kansas City unless – the one caveat is if Rasheed Rice gets a huge suspension, 10 games, something like that. I, I don't think it'll be that big. I think it'll be like four games, six games. Say he gets a huge suspension. And Marquise Brown in, is having a good camp, but Worthy's got the hamstring issues. You're concerned about the other guys. Okay, throw a dart at Traylon Burks at that point. Maybe he's your number three this year. But that's kind of the best case scenario. It's not like this is a guy that overnight could get traded here and has a chance to be your number two. Like That, that is extraordinarily unlikely. So uh, I don't think it'll happen. I don't think the Chiefs will express that much interest, but uh, I liked him coming out of college. It just has not translated to the NFL. Who do you think the Chiefs should trade for? Like, What's a player or a position you would like to go after if you were Brett Veach and Andy Reid? Let me know down in the comment section down below. And I want to explore a couple other positions in just a second. But don't forget to subscribe. Any moves that happen, we will cover it here on the Chiefs Report. So hit that sub button, turn on the notification bell, and never miss a video. What have we talked about recently? Left tackle. Like, would I rather do some kind of trade or pick up as a cut candidate Traylon Burks or receiver, or would I rather go after a left tackle? I'd rather go after a left tackle because Kingsley Suamataya, congratulations, just got married. Uh, the rookie and Wanye Morris isn't exactly inspiring right now when you're going for a three-peat uh, in terms of winning a Super Bowl again. Edge, Charles and Minnie, who's banged up. Don't know when he's going to come back. I would rather add a depth piece there. We talked about Emmanuel Ogba the other, other day. Yannick Ngakwe is still out there. Defensive tackle, Derek Nottie. Eh, Mike Pinnell, good playoff run, but he's bounced around. Obviously, you have Chris Jones, but adding a guy next to him or even a depth piece there, uh, you just had to cut Isaiah Bugs due to his legal matters. Uh, you could certainly add a piece there. So, like, I'm keeping an eye on the trenches, not wide receiver, which Traylon Burks kind of just f fits in with all the other guys competing for roster spots. You re you re-signed McCole Hardman. Like, he knows this offense. You don't need Traylon Burks, who, again, I like the prospect coming out, but – 
I'm not sure he's really a needle mover, whereas a steady veteran left tackle would be. So, again, wide receiver isn't a need uh, unless you're getting a top flight guy, which I don't think the Chiefs are trading for a Brandon Ayuk or something like that. Uh, their issues are in the trenches. Again, left tackle uh, or a defensive lineman. So we'll see if Brett Veach goes in that direction. Obviously, guys are going to get cut. Uh, free agents will start to sign soon uh, for this next wave before training camp. So keep an eye on that. And again, we will have it all covered here on the channel. So stay tuned. Keep it locked in here on the Chiefs Report. My name is Harrison Graham. We'll see you guys soon. Peace.